Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You've heard of the Red Ranger. What about the Purple Ranger? In today's video, we're going to talk about the new Team Spec Revolver in silver and purple. Do you like your rock crawler motors tiny or pequeño? We have just released the new edition of the Team Spec Revolver, the SS Team Spec. These are the same KV as all the previous releases, 2250 KV, but I have changed the housing, I've changed the magnetics, and uh, they did actually turn out to be two grams heavier, but I think it was definitely worth it. So as you can see, we've got the Purple Ranger version here. Uh, that purple turned out so good. It, uh, it's really hard to get a good visual on this in videos and, and uh, photographs, but it's a nice, rich, deep purple. It doesn't look like it's pink. It doesn't look like it's red or blue or anything like that. So it turned out really nice. And then, of course, we have the standard silver. I make these silver typically when we do the Team Spec Revolvers instead of all black because the normal ones are all black, and I want these to, to you know, just kind of stand out, be a little bit different. The purple is definitely different. So as compared to the last batch of team spec revolvers how are these different so these do include the full v3 housing as you can see maybe a little easier to see the purple on the camera i don't know uh, so we've got the v3 spec housing this has the uh, six mounting points to give you more adjustability in your mounting it also has a beefier strain relief on the wire. I know we had a few customers that when they would go to bend their wires that the strain relief would end up bending as well on some earlier versions of the V2 housing. Uh, this one also has more flexible wires exiting as well. We addressed the assembly of that. Nice and tiny 18 gauge wires are included on this because it's such a small motor, it really couldn't sustain high amperage for a long period of time. So there's really no reason to have extra beefy wires on such a small motor. And I feel like a lot of you guys are going to end up chopping off most of these wires anyway. Uh, so where did the two grams of extra weight come from? The extra mounting points here, a little bit beefier strain relief right there, but I also increased the back iron on this one. And I don't know if that'll show up on camera. You kind of have to hold these in your hand to see, but it's a nice, like sexy shaped back iron to where it's only thicker in the points to where it needs to be. And it's thinner on the points where it doesn't need to be. You know, uh, we, we really don't have, it, it's such a tiny motor. It doesn't need a lot of back iron heft to keep it strong. So, I just made it as light as I possibly could while also having some of the features that I really wanted to add for this. Um, this one does have the titanium shaft on it. It also has high, higher strength than normal neodymium magnets that are gold plated because you know if we're doing a team spec, you gotta have the gold plated magnets on there. It doesn't really change the performance of it, but if you do get it into water or you know some salty conditions or something like that, the first two things that are gonna rust on a motor are gonna be your magnets and your stator. The magnets, it's, it's really hard to treat them anyway to make them not rust except for either an epoxy plate, which is easily scratched off, or a gold plating, which is not so easily scratched off. So I went with the gold plating because it, it just looks good, honestly. Especially the gold next to the uh, purple. I really like that. Um, if you did want to waterproof these even more, I would suggest you get some Corrosion X. You would soak the stator in it pretty much. You don't have to take it apart. Uh, it's totally safe for ball bearings and everything. It's kind of a liquid wax sort of thing corrosion x is uh, so you would soak it in that you would get your stator nice and uh, impregnated with that rust inhibitor and then you could i don't want to say you could run it wet and put it away wet but technically with corrosion x you could especially if you sprayed it out again with corrosion x while it was wet it would displace that water out of it for you and then reapply that wax once the uh whatever dispersant that they have in there dries out it leaves kind of a waxy coating behind so if you do want to run these in water that would be my recommendation. Personally, I don't like running my stuff in water. It's a lot of hassle. You're pretty much just guaranteed to have rust issues in your rigs and you gotta rebuild things and repack axles. And um, I, I just kind of stay out of water for that reason. So uh, that is the new Team Spec, the SS Team Spec Revolver for 2022 is definitely the year that we're in. And I knew that before I looked at my watch. I'm 
very positive of that. So yeah, if you do have any questions about this, uh, they are good for 3 and 4S. 3S is super safe. 4S depends on your ESC if it can handle a commutation rate. So far with all of our testing, the Crawlmaster V2 has had no problems with it. However, just watch your heat. Your, your mileage may vary. You may need to uh, tweak and tune, change your gear ratio, maybe change your programming on the Crawlmaster V2, you know, bump that sign range down a little bit. But these are such a small motor. Uh, all of my testing so far has been great with it. So just to, just to give you a heads up on that. Uh, I guess I will end with what would you put this into? Well, what would I put it into? It's going to be kind of a lighter weight competition style rig. Doesn't have to be a competition style rig. Doesn't have to be a lightweight rig, but more or less something that's going to be between the four pound and the five and a half pound range is, is going to be more typical. I have one crammed in here. Uh, with a, uh, this is a T210, I think, uh, transmission, really low ratio, especially combined with the portals, and this thing just creeps. Uh, also having the really uh, big ratio, if you will, a lot of gear down, it gives us a lot of drag brake control. It, it just gives us a lot of inherent, uh, you know, it'll, it'll still roll. These are still really smooth starting motors if you compare it with a Castle ESC. Uh, and, and when you pair it with something like a normal style ESC, a Castle ESC, we are always going to have a trade-off for that static hold and our ability to start smooth. So with the addition of the back iron on there, I tried to balance it as well as possible by having a uh, higher drag brake without increasing our hold force too much so that it would still start smoothly with a castle esc there we go nice and clean ready for our next video so if you do have any questions otherwise uh, leave them in the comments below and i'll do my best to get to them as always have a fantastic day and i hope you like the purple as much as i do have a great one yeah oh my elbow. Ah!